Hello and welcome to another episode of Make Tain Trace of Soy, the podcast all about surviving and thriving on a plant-based, low-waste lifestyle. I'm your host, Rochelle, and if you're new around here, thank you for joining us. Really psyched to have you listening today. If you're a regular listener, welcome back, soybeans. Really glad that you guys keep coming back every single week. If you are new around here, you won't know this, but we do shout-outs on the show. So if there is a question that you have or a topic that you'd like covered or even an interview you'd like to see us do, you can contact us on Instagram. We are at Make a Tain Trace of Soy or on Facebook, and we'll do a shout out for you on the next show. Um, this week, I'm really excited because we are talking with a vegan activist, uh, and the experience that Chris has had is just absolutely amazing. It's so interesting talking through what he's done in this field, and I'm just so grateful that he was able to come on the podcast. So without any further ado, here is my interview with Chris Hiraway. I'm lucky enough to be joined on the podcast this week by Chris Hirawaya, and Chris is from New Zealand, or uh, I'm going to try and pronounce it correctly, uh, the actual name, Aotearoa. I think I've got that right. I'm not sure. I'm sure that Chris will be able to correct me, but he is an activist. He's a content creator. He's co-founder of the Aotearoa Liberation League and three-time street unicycle world champion because why not? Uh, Chris also works with the Vegan Society. He is the co-producer and main narrator of the recent documentary film Milked that takes a targeted look at the New Zealand dairy industry. This came out in November of last year and it's already taken out awards at the Germany International Film Festival, the Indie Fest Film Awards, and the Spotlight Documentary Film Awards. It even received a rave from James Cameron who called it a powerful wake-up call that the world is getting milked. Kia ora, Chris. Thank you for being on. Kia ora, Rochelle. Kia ora, thank you for having me on. Um, Aotearoa is the name, Aotearoa, but beautiful pronunciation, beautiful, beautiful attempt. It's a difficult one. There's a lot of uh, different um, things about Maori pronunciation and how we blend our vowels together and drag out certain things, but I very much appreciate the attempt. Thank you so much. And yeah, again, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here. I'm really psyched to have you on and get into one of some of the wonderful topics that we're going to cover today, but let's mm-hmm. just like jump right into it and talk about online activism in the vegan movement. Um, The whole reason that we're doing this interview is because found each other on TikTok. I'm thoroughly enjoying what you're doing for the New Mm -hmm. Zealand Vegan Society on there. And I love that the way that you are bringing humor into your online activism. So what kind of role do you see online activism playing in the vegan movement? Uh, Well, thank you so much. You know, it's so humbling and nice to hear people appreciate your humor you know I mean uh creating funny little TikTok videos is a new thing for me um I started my advocacy or activist journey as a vegan advocate on Facebook uh when Instagram came along I was reluctant to get on Instagram when TikTok came along I was reluctant to get on TikTok um and so now I've finally caught up and decided um, to get involved in TikTok. I've I've been really enjoying it, you know? And even like some of my friends who don't try and make viral content, for example, but they they share their personality in ways that I've not seen before. TikTok seems to bring out a different creative side in people. So I'm actually really enjoying the app. I didn't think I would. Um, I thought I'd just go on there to make some um, silly little videos and create some opportunities for vegan advocacy but I actually kind of like the app, which is funny because, you know, social media, there's so many potential downsides to it, but like everything, it's a tool. And if you can use it in the right way, it can be incredibly powerful. Um, So yeah, really enjoying um, the TikTok space uh, and glad it brought us together. Yeah. TikTok is really interesting because on Instagram, you very much find a lot of aspirational content, but on TikTok, it's really mm. trumped by relatable content. So I feel like honesty comes forward a lot more in TikTok, and that might be how I curate my feed, but uh, it's definitely what I see more of. And the way that you kind of, you sort of weave a bit of humor in, and I also love to see you using language as well, like using Mari language. I think that's so amazing. I think it's so important to see more of that out there and to just, yeah, have it just be a part of how we're interacting in online spaces. Absolutely. Um, And yeah, and I just have to say a little plug, right? Um, I'm trying to get to a thousand followers. (laughs) So if you're out there and you've got TikTok, um, because I really want to try to do live vegan outreach, you know, to see the live 
feature seems to do really well in terms of interacting. Um, but yeah, honesty and relatability on TikTok seems to be the thing. I'm, I'm really, really new to the platform. So if anyone has any tips or ideas for me to grow um, on TikTok, really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, in terms of adding in Te Reo Māori into my TikToks, you know, I, I'm, I just try to add as much um, uh, flavor of Aotearoa, of, of this country into these videos, because like you say, that relatability aspect, when we see stuff that's really authentically us, and then there's also humor added into it, and then also some information, some learning, um, it's, it's a really effective way to package all of that stuff into one thing and make it a complete relatable little video for someone. Um, so yeah, I, I try and make relatable content for vegans, but really I can't take too much credit for uh, my videos. I mean, the, the, jokes, the jokes that I make are generally like memes, like famous vegan memes. And I think like maybe like every third video or second video is like something that I've had in terms of an original thought. Um, but like I've been on Facebook for a long time. I love memes and I'm always sharing memes. Um, TikTok has just like provided a new different kind of space to repurpose those memes and those messages within those memes. Uh, and now to reach a different uh, audience and the people that I've been interacting with on TikTok, I engage in the comment section and often have like quite good productive conversations, like quite effective outreach, which is why I'm inspired to get involved with doing live vegan outreach through TikTok uh, when that option becomes available. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic platform to explore that. And it can be a way to reach people who might not have thought to look at veganism or, you know, to discuss it with their friends. I think finding that sideways path to take the, you know, taking a path where you're in, engaging in such a way that has a sense of humor like that really does help people to relate more and then understand where you're coming from. And I think it also just is genuinely quite funny. It's, you know, it sort of uh, provides a more relatable and just a more friendly face on veganism, which I think is something that we do still have to be mindful of, especially with new vegans, um, mm. because with people who are first kind of looking into the movement, there can be a lot of gatekeeping and there can be mm. a lot of intensity and it can be quite uncomfortable. And a lot of people are uncomfortable with the learning period. So I think that that humor really helps. Oh, definitely. And um, I'm representing the vegan society of Aotearoa as well. So I try to come at it from a bit of a positive angle and the philosophy of the society is very much to try and create as as much of a welcoming atmosphere as possible um you know all about meeting people where they're at giving them support um trying to be as non-judgmental as possible you know so sometimes in some of my tiktoks i kind of make fun of of us of vegans because we can be quite judgmental at times and i think it's okay for us to to acknowledge that and to laugh at it um, but yeah, there, there's so much gatekeeping, like you said, and things like that. It's really important, um, for us to think about how we're viewed, um, by outsiders, you know, and I'm an activist, uh, first and foremost. Uh, and so how we're viewed by the public, by the media, um, by just people that we outreach to is very much something that's often on my mind. Uh, and really, you know, if you can create that friendly atmosphere, have a laugh with someone, that really breaks down barriers and helps them to eat, to see you as a human being, which often, you know, doesn't happen when people look at vegans or, or vice versa or even. So if we can have a laugh together, especially in videos, we were kind of a little bit making fun of each other, but it ends with a laugh. Um, I think that's the best one because it connects us and helps to remind everybody that we're all individuals, but that we still share um, some commonalities like being able to laugh together. Yeah, absolutely. And you've actually got quite an extensive background as far as content creation and video and, you know, social media goes. Um, you've got multiple YouTube channels that you manage or that you've been on at the very least from what I could find. Mm -hmm. So you've definitely got the kind of skills there. How do you think TikTok compares um, with sort of YouTube? Because it's such a different style and such a different platform. Uh, it's totally a different style. I would say uh, I haven't cracked the YouTube algorithm yet, and I haven't really given it a whole lot of um, time. Um, Facebook was what I first got involved in. 
Um, and then after that, I started making some more like long, long form videos, informative videos, um, and making those long form informative videos er, haven't really done too well. And so, yeah, there's just, it's very clear that the world seems to be moving towards short form videos. Even Facebook is pumping extra funding into re-establishing or improving their short form video interface for viewers and so yeah tiktok um kind of ahead of the game in terms of creating the best user face and also tools within the app for content creation uh and and yeah it's where the majority of people seem to be these days in terms of watching that content it's where all of the youth are going um and if we're doing advocacy especially around veganism that's a such an important demographic for us to be to be um, outreaching to um, so i think it's great to be kind of everywhere um, but if you're wanting to focus on actually reaching people then tiktok to me seems like it is the space i mean so now i have experienced um creating a documentary milked with amy taylor uh, who's our director incredible director um and you know getting people to screenings uh, is very difficult we're you know uh post-covid well during covid times uh, it's still affecting um many people many places um we recently had a screening and yeah a lot of feedback from people is that hey covid is an issue uh and it is discouraging people and of course now it's turned into a, a really really long video or movie that is posted on youtube and yeah it's like it's over an hour and a half <laughs> so it, it is good in terms of um, providing uh, information um, but you know i've been seeing a lot of people take clips from it cut it up and put it on their, their own tiktoks which i which i think is fine and sometimes those smaller short form videos seem to get uh, m maybe not more views than the, the youtube video but it's definitely a, a clearly good place um, to, to disseminate information these smaller videos that i've seen posted on tiktok are usually shared by like small creators and whatnot if those videos were shared by a really pop popular creator um, it could potentially you know really really blow up um, more than it has on youtube so um, in comparison yeah different platforms good for different things um, but we always need to be able to adapt and to look at what's happening if people get stuck on one platform like i did um, you can get left behind I really encourage people to get into short form videos, whether you're on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, short form seems to be um, definitely the future. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But then the complexity of that that comes with it is that some of these issues are far too robust to fully encapsulate within short form. And especially mm. when you're doing activism and when you're talking to really complicated, you know, issues, it can be so hard even to do the video or to, you know, reply to comments because the, like the amount of time you need and the amount of space, the amount, you know, length of video, et cetera, it, it just isn't there. So finding um, that balance for your tone as well can be quite difficult, but I think that you're doing a great job on TikTok. So we'll talk about some more tips when we finish the interview, because I've done a little bit of research recently. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's talk about your vegan story. I would love to hear about how you became vegan because yeah, on in the documentary, it was really interesting to hear you talk about your experience of growing up and, you know, having milk on your wheat fix every day and how you mm. go from that life of believing, you know, the dairy industry in New Zealand and all of that was such a great thing to sort of coming around to vegan activism. Yeah, sure. Um, so I've always, always loved animals and I'm the youngest in my family. I think it was kind of always my responsibility uh, to go around and feed the animals, whether it was the cats or the dogs or the chickens or the rabbit. Uh, that was always my responsibility. So I've always had a close relationship with the animals. And I was homeschooled after the age of eight and had a really lonely upbringing after that stage. But I had animals around me. Um, so yeah, just spent a lot of time on what I guess you'd call a farm, call it a lifestyle block. Um, we'd, we had kind of two of everything. Um, we even had two cows and yeah, I spent a lot, a lot of time with them, bringing them snacks and stuff, you know, seeing how they react to X, Y, Z, watching them clean themselves, drink water and all the funny little quirky things that animals have. So having a close relationship with them and then realizing that it's actually possible to eat other things. It's so normalized consuming animal products 
that you don't even think about vegetarianism. So we have a lot of people who really love animals, but simply because eating animal products is so normalized, it's never questioned. So I don't know what happened. Maybe I saw an ad from an animal rights group or something along those lines, or I got on um, whatever the social media was at the time and, and saw some kind of link to something. But eventually I learned about the documentary Earthlings. And that was really my first wake up call to what is happening. I didn't go vegan straight away. Uh, I went vegetarian when I was about 13. That was actually before watching Earthlings, but I was vegetarian, then watched Earthlings. And then I also learned about the environmental harm of animal agriculture. And, you know, here in Aotearoa, really loving the environment. I grew up next to my river, Mangatawa. And this is a river that I like could spend all day, every day at. Um, and it was just absolute treasure to have that there you know that was my way to connect with the environment connect with the universe connect with animals and all those beautiful things then you know the the understanding that i had that that aspect of our existence having beautiful natural spaces to interact with was threatened by animal agriculture uh, i started to realize that i shouldn't just make it a personal choice um, to avoid these products, I should actually be trying to talk to other people about these issues because this is our collective well-being that we're talking about in terms of what's being impacted. It's not just me as an individual who loves animals and doesn't want to eat animals. This is actually something that you know an industry, a corporation, is doing, um, hurting our collective good for their own private gain. So from there, putting everything together, I realized, whoa, actually, I need to be a vegan. Uh, and so as soon as I went vegan, that's pretty much when I got involved with activism and advocacy. I watched Forks Over Knives um, and became a real health advocate in terms of adopting veganism. You know, a lot of people in my family and neighborhood, you know, it's a, a low socioeconomic area, a very Maori uh, dominated area. And my people, we've got so many issues because of colonization and because of the disconnect uh, that was forced on us from our colonization us now having to live in you know a colonial health system uh, a dietary pyramid that doesn't suit our you know our, our cultural needs um, and so of course our negative health statistics come through in that and our, our diet what we consume is quite dominated by animal products and of course, you know, processed flour and baked goods and potato chips and that kind of junk food, junk food. And for me, I saw veganism as a way for a lot of people to get out of that system. Um, you know, I was learning about things like uh, a, plant, a whole foods plant-based diet, reversing heart disease, diabetes, um, and the fact that cancer rates were a lot lower for people who consumed food that way. And so, yeah, I started talking to people about that raising awareness around the health benefits. And then do, 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 fast forward a couple of years and I moved to Tamaki Makoto, Auckland city, our biggest city here in Aotearoa. And I, from there met other animal rights people, right, right, you know, hardcore activists, grr, animal rights people. And from there, we, I got involved with the more, um, how would you put it in your face um, type uh, activism, you know, doing uh, anonymous for the voiceless cubes um, my friend daniel started the first anonymous for the voiceless chapter in auckland um, and we rolled with that for a few years i no longer associate with anonymous for the voiceless i'm not a big fan of them anymore but i can definitely acknowledge uh, a lot of people involved in doing that activism are really hardworking, well-intentioned beautiful people um, mm -hmm. i just have some disagreements more with the, the leadership structure and um, some of their uh, more broader uh, philosophical points in terms of their leadership but the activists themselves um, I have a lot of love and respect uh, and really think that the cube of truth action is a is a great form of of advocacy yeah and then I uh, made a documentary da, 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 um, and now working with the vegan society of Aotearoa uh, and also working on um, my own group which I run with my partner Summer uh, which is called Aotearoa Liberation League. And one of the main things we do through Aotearoa Liberation League is draw links between colonization and animal agriculture. Not a lot of people know, but 
colonization and animal agriculture. Animal agriculture, especially in the terms of Britain coming here to Aotearoa, it was animal agriculture which drove that colonial mission. You know, in England, they needed more land, they needed more area so that they could grow animals to fuel their war machine, which was colonizing other countries all around the world. And so they saw Aotearoa as the perfect place to establish a, a new farm for Britain. And so, you know, the crown came here through all sorts of dodgy ways, stole land from Māori, from Tongata Whenua, and there are still currently policies and whatnot being rolled out today to try and make amends for stolen land. Um, but just like I'm sure how it is in Australia um, with um, the indigenous people of Australia, there will be um, a lot of pushback from the government in terms of their supposed responsibilities to make amends for the harm that has been perpetuated over many, many, many years to uh, our indigenous people, not just here in Aotearoa, but Australian, all around the world. Um, but I feel like there's somewhat of a resurgence going on in terms of recognizing the rights of indigenous peoples. But yeah, so that's something we try to talk about as much as we can on Aotearoa Liberation League. Um, we have a YouTube channel where we make more long form videos. But like I'm saying, I think the short form videos are probably more effective. And so that's probably what we're going to try and move into. But we do try to provide a lot of information and research to people so that they can understand those more complex issues that are, are tied in with animal agriculture, such as colonization and the need to address uh, animal agriculture, not just because of all of the reasons, animal rights, environment, health, um, but also because it's somewhat of a colonial crime here in Aotearoa. And it's one, and, and I believe using that as a bridge to address animal agriculture through a decolonial lens is an incredibly powerful one. And there's a, a really great opportunity there uh, for us to take that avenue in terms of getting better outcomes for animals. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually an area I'm really interested in because you see a lot of, or I see a lot of um, BIPOC creators in the vegan community who are mm -hmm. talking to these issues and they're talking to the fact that colonization has interrupted, you know, diets for indigenous peoples and for people mm. who their societies have been interrupted by colonization the diets are interrupted and it's all basically to like you say bring animals there farm them there mm. and it's interesting to see people talking about that because in veganism we do have a real issue with white supremacy that hasn't been properly addressed and it definitely is an area that as a whole community we need to stop and look at you know, are you being intersectional in your veganism? If you're an intersectional feminist, you know, you stop and you consider where is your lane and what mm. should you be doing? And are you raising up voices around you? Are you sitting down and being quiet when it's time to sit down and be quiet? And I think that we are let, we're kind of yet to reach that point in the veganism movement. And I think there's a lot of work to be done there. So I think that's really interesting to hear you talk about that. Veganism, obviously it's a movement it's been rightfully criticized for that lack of representation. And we see an awful lot of white veganism out there. And the word vegan comes from the 1944 you know, vegan society statement, but BIPOC communities were practicing plant-based lifestyles a long time before that. And it's not properly acknowledged quite often. So it's really interesting to hear you speak on those topics. Oh yeah. And I love this topic. I mean, if my partner was, we just, she just, we just filmed a short form video of her reciting a poem from Al Ma'ari. who was a real like old school, old, old, old school um, practitioner of Ahimsa. And he pretty much gives the first written example, I guess you could say of a kind of vegan lifestyle. He even references avoiding honey. Um, and so he, he takes it, he takes it deep on the veganism. Um, and, you know, indigenous peoples have, have had, um, these notions of, of our entire world being interconnected and relying on, you know, these interconnections. Um, and so from, uh, for me, at least, um, from my perspective, thinking about the lessons from my ancestors, my tupuna, and how I believe they would, um, you know, feel about this issue, considering it causes so much destruction, so much violence, so much um, severing of ties between us and the natural world because of the harm that it causes, they would be doing absolutely everything to end this catastrophe that's currently taking place. 
and at the very least becoming aware about it in term and you know instead of this this blissful ignorance that we, that we see from most people and you know i mean i can get very bitter and upset about that blissful ignorance but you know we can't really blame people for that blissful ignorance the system sets it up this way to make people docile you know uh and placid and to to yeah it's a real struggle for people to fight against this blissful ignorance but yeah you know we see a lot of white supremacy in the vegan movement um, but we see a lot of everything in the vegan movement you know like i would say the vegan movement has, has now become so wide we literally it's literally a reflection of the public it's just you know because we come in all shapes and sizes us vegans um but yeah like all social justice spaces with blind spots veganism and vegans we definitely have ours and broadening perspectives helping people to widen how they view social justice as vegans is something that's really important to me um, because you know the world is moving on everyone's realizing that we are interconnected and that we are all a part of each other and whatnot and if vegans don't catch up and start to have a more holistic view on what is going on in the world um, then yeah no one's going to take us seriously um, if, if, if all we're going to do is talk about animals and particularly talk about animals in a way that puts down other social justice movements, then people are just going to completely cast us aside, uh, consider all of our perspectives. You know, there's a lot of vegans out there that give us bad names and whatnot. They're just going to cast us all aside, cast all of our opinions aside uh, because of a few bad, I don't want to say eggs. What's a good... <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? A few yeah. bad apples. There we go. Yeah. A few bad apples. But yeah, I, I try not to be too hard on us because I do kind of just see us as a reflection of the public and the public mm -hmm. in general is, is racist and stupid and, you know, doesn't know what's going on because of course the system sets us up that way to be so blissfully ignorant about everything and uh, for us to just go along with propping up the current system, which is oppressing all of us. And so uh, it's difficult for us to name things and to learn about the weaknesses of ourselves because those are the weaknesses of the system. So it's hard for us to point and, um, you know, really analyze and improve on those things. So, yeah, I got a lot of love, a lot of love for vegans. <laughs> I think we have an amazing community. Um, but at the same time, just like every other space, we've got a lot of stuff that we need to work on. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of good intentions and I think a little bit of understanding and, you know, self-education and really digging in and sort of like examining what you're thinking, where you're coming at these different topics from is really important. So I think those are such good points, but let's, um, let's do a quick shout out for all of your projects that you have coming up because there are so many things happening, so much stuff for people to check out. We're going to drop all of the links, obviously, in the show notes today. So definitely go down there and have a look. Go and say hi to Chris. You can find him on TikTok as um, at the Vegan Society NZ. Um, mm -hmm. And you can obviously go and find his YouTube channel. And we'll we'll put all the links down there. But mm. throw it over to you there, Chris. Tell us what they should yeah. go check for. Thanks. Yeah. And definitely check out our documentary, Milked. It's on YouTube and it's also on the platform Water Beer which is like a, it's kind of like a Netflix for environmental um, documentaries. It's all about the dairy industry of Aotearoa. Uh, it's, it's not too graphic. There's, there's kind of a couple scenes, um, but generally we try to stay away from graphic and confrontational stuff. It's more about um, information statistics around the environment, also the economy and health. Um, but yeah, we try to make it as palatable as possible. So if you're worried about that, about that kind of thing, it's definitely not Dominion 2 or Earthlings 2. So <laughs> yeah, definitely recommend. It's at milked.film. Uh, and um, you can follow us on our socials for Milked as well to see updates about the film. Um, unfortunately, I won't be too much more involved with the film. Um, just, you know, some unfortunate disagreements in-house and we've kind of agreed to part ways at this point moving forward but i definitely recommend that people still check out the film and support the film um, but work that i'll be doing moving forward will be through aotearoa liberation league which is all.org.nz uh, that's our website and through our website you can find all of our social medias instagram tiktok twitter facebook all of it um, and as well yeah just myself to explore this like vegan comedy side i am on tiktok as vegan society nz uh, and trying to make a video every day who knows if i'll be able to keep that up 
but um, I, I'm looking forward to the one that I'm, I'm about to release. I filmed it just before and I'm going to release it soon. I'm, I'm like actually excited. <laughs> I, feel, awesome. I, I feel, I feel um, really silly getting excited about it today, but I am excited about it to be quite honest. It's, um, it's been enjoyable just making the videos, you know, like when I was a kid, I was kind of like the class clown and I feel like I'm kind of tapping back into that childhood spirit again. So uh, I'm enjoying it. And final plug, if people appreciate the work that I do um, through Aotearoa Liberation League on our website, you can find a donate um, link, which sends you to our Kofi. Um, currently me and my partner are, you know, we're trying to get as out of the system as possible, um, which basically means we're unemployed, um, but we're trying <laughs> our best to become um, full-time activists. Um, and yeah, so if there's support from people out there, um, we'd really appreciate it. But uh, other projects that I have, there's a few disruptions, actions that we're planning here in Aotearoa. I shouldn't say too much. Eh? There's a few things going on in Aotearoa. It's, it's an exciting um, space at the moment. Lots of new blood coming through in the activism space. And also a lot of our, um, I guess I can call them more seniors, more experienced um, crew um, are, are being a bit... Um, um, revitalized and coming up um, with um, some discussions of things, which is really exciting because um, I got into the activism space, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. And to see this kind of convergence, return of the old and also coming up with the, of the new uh, is very exciting for me at the moment. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on today, Chris. It's been so great chatting with you. Mm, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Rochelle. That was my interview with Chris. You'll be able to go and find all of Chris's links in today's show notes. You can go and check out the Aratura, um Liberation League, which Chris and his partner have founded. And you can also go check out the documentary film Milked. So really excited to share that interview with you guys this week. I really enjoyed it. And I'm so grateful that Chris was so giving of his time to do the interview with me. So I'll drop all the links in the show notes below. Definitely head down there and have a look, check it all out. Go and follow Chris um, for the Vegan Society New Zealand on TikTok. That is at Vegan Society New NZ or one word. And yeah, just go and check out our show notes as well to go and have a look at some of our links. We are doing some YouTube videos, which is very new for us here. So if you want to go have a look at some of those, you can find the link in the show notes today and you can go and follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. We are at May Contain Traces of Soy. Remember that if you're enjoying the podcast, if you leave a little rating or review on whatever platform you're listening on, that definitely helps to push the podcast out there so that more people will see it and hopefully spread that non-judgmental vegan message. Thanks so much for being here this week, guys, and we will catch you in a week.